Hello, good evening, and welcome back. It is finally here. Huzzah, huzzah. The Brexit Party manifesto is out. And what does Nigel Farage say? Well, according to the BBC, the Brexit Party pledges a political revolution. Having covered the Labour manifesto, <laughs> this manifesto is it's so radical, you could almost say it's centrist. Yes. <laughs> what radical policies has he got in store? None. None at all. But nonetheless, of course, that's uh, how we framed, and maybe that's the, the desire from Nigel Farage to try and say this country's really broken, so it's time for radical change. In which case, from there, I suppose you could say some of them are quite radical compared to what is there at the moment. But taken on their own in a vacuum, it's, it's very moderate. It's, um, <laughs> it's, it's almost refreshing in how tame it is. So, Nigel Farage has unveiled the Brexit Party's general election policies, promising a political revolution that puts ordinary people first. <laughs> the thing about ordinary people is that none of them are ordinary. The party leader pledged to halve the foreign aid budget. Good man. Because after all, <laughs> clean your room. If, if you can't take care of your own room, then what makes you think you can take care of the world? The same goes for over here. If you can't take care of your own country, then what makes you think you can take care of others? You can't. In which case, sort out your own country, and then maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to help out other people who think very differently from you. Until then, don't try and be the white saviour. You're not. He also wants to abolish the House of Lords. Um, I would say swap House of Lords with Supreme Court, seeing as the Supreme Court is a foreign introduction by Tony Blair about ten years ago. And I might be on board. The House of Lords, in essence, uh, as it was intended, was supposed to be good for people who had a further sight than just until the next election. They were supposed to be in longer standing for decades instead of for five years. And that's the idea behind that. Uh, the Supreme Court is already far too political, as they have already taken their opinion into... Brexit. And it is bad, of course, when somebody says that they abide by an intersectional communist ideology being feminism, and they are the spokesperson for the Supreme Court. So the one I'm talking about here is, of course, with the prorogued parliament. Well, they haven't just said, no, it is not prorogued anymore, but they've said it was never prorogued. That is, it's not quite a contradiction in terms, but it's as good or as bad, depending on how you wish to see it. But he does also intend to cap permanent immigration at 50,000 a year. This is still a very large number, um, considering this would be reducing it by about a fifth, unless you're talking about gross migration instead of net, in which case you'd be looking at um, about 600,000 instead of 250,000. And if, if you do mean net, as in you're only allowing 50,000 people in a year anyway, then the population will decrease. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, um, especially if those 50,000 people you're bringing in are particularly good. You are then essentially treating the entire country like a prestigious university, in which case only the best can be here. The thing is, then you already have the people who were born here will also stay here. So it depends if you can take good care enough of your own countrymen. But I'm sure that'll be fine, considering the caliber of people you are bringing in. That should sort itself out. They go on to say the Brexit party is running in 275 seats after deciding to stand down in the 317 won by the Tories in 2017. And considering that they are running on a very similar platform, this was definitely a, a good idea. And although they are similar, the differences are big enough, I think, in order to rival that of Labour. This is particularly pertinent when you're going into areas mainly controlled by Labour uh, up in the north. And that's what gives credence to particular projections, which say that the Tories are going to get a vast majority, maybe even a super majority, two thirds, and the Labour's will hardly get any votes at all, which is only good things as far as I'm concerned. But with a manifesto like this, as I will get on to, I would quite like them to, to form a coalition, at least of, of some sorts, in order to have some sway in the direction of the country, at least politically. It's not all good news, but at least it's something which I think still leaves a gap for a further right-wing party to 
rise up and in order to take quite a few votes for themselves, as I think that's a lot of people who aren't being listened to. But seeing as the divide is as it is, I think the Brexit Party have gone in the perfect place from a power grab perspective in order to grab as many votes as possible from people who are disillusioned from, uh, from government. But they might be losing people who wouldn't otherwise vote, because let's not forget, the turnout is normally about 60% or so. So, speaking in London, Farage said his party would scrap VAT on fuel bills and stop companies earning less than £10,000 a year paying corporation tax. Uh, this won't have much effect, except for the, the smaller businesses trying to then make a name for themselves. So I can definitely attest to that to say that's, uh, that's a positive change. Um, I, I don't think you necessarily need help. Uh, you just need a level playing field because, of course, you do have a, a bell curve of tax. It isn't just a marginal increase, whereby then the top earners pay even less tax due to tax breaks. And they're like, that isn't gifting money. That's just getting them to be taxed less, so they pay less. He promised millions of trees will be planted to absorb carbon emissions because you've got to offset that white guilt somehow. I mean, <laughs> yes, of course, China look much worse for the environment than the British are. But nonetheless, when you have that level of guilt, then you have to be able to do something about it. And some <laughs> throw some pennies towards the Green Party, if you will, try and win over that one seat in Brighton. Mr. Farage said his party would save tens of billions of pounds by redirecting foreign aid. Good man. Let's, let's keep it. Let's try and sort out our own country before we think we can actually help out in another country. Scrapping the high-speed 2 rail project. Yes, it's unnecessary, fair enough. And stopping the UK's contributions to the EU. Well, we are the, the second biggest contributor at 17%. So, yes, most certainly. Why not? <laughs> Leave Germany there, which is currently at 20%. Try and absorb that 17%. Why not? <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> he also claimed the party could recover. £7 billion from the UK share of capital at the European Investment Bank. And some would say it's far more than that if we withdrew all of our money out of the European Bank. But at the very least, that's a start. Farage said he favoured making civil servants sign a pledge of political neutrality. Well, that would be ideal. They are there to serve the people, to serve a party or a master. And devising political guidelines for the Supreme Court, or at the very least, just get rid of them. If you have a Supreme Court, that means you need a constitution. We don't have a written constitution. You can trace it back to the Magna Carta, but even then, it's, it's just spoken, and uh, it's common law, if you will, instead of... It's more guidelines as opposed to actual rules. He added that any Brexit party MPs elected would hold Boris Johnson to his word over Brexit and act as new radicals in Parliament to change politics for good. I think that's certainly good. Um, Farage has changed his tune. Maybe he's being more realistic, or maybe he's thinking, no, no, what, what Boris is saying is, is good, more of a, an instant transition instead of the slow one that would never happen, and therefore we'll take all we can get, because this leaves it something. Which at least means that then if he starts to slide backwards, even if he retains some conservative votes, he won't get them from the Brexit party, because I think Boris, party, uh, Boris is as appeasing as he can be in order to still get these votes. So it shouldn't be a problem there. Immigration levels came down to 50,000 people a year. Hard cap, good man. Other pledges, let's go over these then. Introducing a ban on exporting waste to other countries for it to be burned. This brings in the <laughs> conspiracy over recycling, which is only about 40% of things that you think can be recycled are actually recycled. And then more labour and technology and investment is required in order to decide what can and can't be recycled over what you've already put in. Then on top of that, what then happens to what is supposedly recycled, often it is sent off to other countries, like China, who don't actually want it, and then they burn it. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them, they've already shown they don't care about pollution. Whether that's air pollution, shown by how bad their cities are, P2M particles and the like, or if it's just dumping pollution, <laughs> plastic as well, as well whatever kinds of um, toxic chemicals you wish to mention, into the Yangtze River in China, seeing as I believe eight of the ten most polluting rivers are in China. It could be seven, because the other three are in Africa. But they are in Asia. And then, providing free base-level broadband for deprived regions, and free Wi-Fi on all public transport. As much as nice to have free information, I think this is a red herring. 95% of the population are happy with the broadband they receive. This is just given by Labour. You don't need to worry about it. Fucking stop it. You don't need to own the means of production. Okay, Brexit party? Cool. 
abolishing business rates for shops outside the M25, funded by a small online sales tax. Small tax. Hilarious. 21 who pays tax, so basically everyone, would you say your tax contributions are small? Would you say they're ever small? No, of course not. Scrapping all interest on student loans and abolishing inheritance tax. Um, by all interest, it depends if he means are you going to keep it up with the rate of inflation or not. If you're not, then brilliant, just, just wait 20 years and then pay it off there because it's essentially worth less. Um, <laughs> why not? Go for it. And abolishing inheritance tax, I'm definitely on board with that. You've been earning uh, money your, your entire life, you've been paying tax on it, and you've been paying tax on them for things that you have bought. I think it's only right that you don't get taxed on the same income twice. I don't know what you all to do with VAT. But anyway, then to pass it on to your children as you wish to, I would say, yes, definitely getting rid of it. And then you might be saying, oh, but what about the people who are born into wealth? That's not fair. So yes, and they don't stay with that wealth. It's, it's lucky for them, I suppose. But then they lose that wealth because they don't have the skills to make it or maintain it. And then within three generations, the vast majority, and over 90%, are, are left with nothing again. You can look back through your family tree or those of your friends especially if you're also working class, to then see, well, was, my, was my family ever wealthy? For example, now I'm just trying to get by with money, even though apparently, about four generations ago, my family earned, owned quite a few um, casinos and pubs, as in a, a dozen or a couple dozen. It's, it's quite, quite a good little empire. And then one of them didn't know what they were doing with money, gambled it all away, funny enough, one of the casinos, and lost everything. Except for one pub. <laughs> uh, so yes, now now I'm here and I've got to start it all up again. So that's what I intend to do for for my children. So I don't want the fucking inheritance tax to stop that. Phasing out the BBC license fee, well, good. They can put ads on their broadcasts in other countries. Why not do it here? I, d I don't support them. I don't pay the license fee because I don't have a television, and I'm not getting a television until I don't have to pay the license fee or they change their rules. Limiting postal voting to people who are elderly and firm are overseas. This is particularly a problem when you have uh, people who come in of a particular community and they don't speak sufficient English to understand what is going on and their votes are done for them by their community leaders who have agreements with the political parties as well. Buying votes, if you will. Um, and yes, this was historically done a lot um, in America, for example, that some would say JFK was the first candidate to win without buying the election. Fair enough. Nonetheless, that's often by people not knowing what they're doing, not speaking the language, being disconnected from politics, whatever it might be. It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. Let's not encourage it. So limiting postal votes is a way to do that. You can't trust the people, therefore you've got to try and run catch-up on enacting policies. But limiting the migration should help with that as well. Even though now that the birth rate of um, Muslims is... I believe it's the, the, the birth rate is... 10 times that of indigenous British people. And it's not the repopulation rate, but it's the birth rate, I believe. So they've kind of thought, well, we don't really need to um, do any more terror attacks for the time being, seeing as we're, we're all of a, a similar enough sect, in which case we're just going to take them over more peacefully through repopulation. I don't think the British people are going to take that lane down. As I've already said, the British culture, you'll take it until you won't. And at one point it will snap. And they'll say, oh, fuck this, hell no. And there will be riots in the street, and people will willingly die for what they believe in. That is British culture. That is what it means to be British. To take it until a point when we won't. Nice until we're not, as Blackfield says. So you can expect that if this doesn't get controlled soon. The only way to avoid vigilante justice is for the law to be respectable and be respected so the people don't think they have to do it themselves. Seeing as that is slowly losing its ground, people will do it themselves. And nobody wants to see what that looks like. If particular communities try and set up ghettos in cities, saying it's a no-go zone for the people who used to live there, for ethnically British people, they will get a very rude awakening when they are just obliterated from no questions asked. And in that case, what would the law do about them then? I don't think they really could do anything. Because I have a sneaking suspicion quite a few of the people already working for the law, police and army, kind of agree with them. 
So I don't think they're really going to stop. I think they're just going to stand idly by and let it happen. Because they don't want to get caught up in the crossfire either. As I've already said, the British people will happily die for it. Maybe not happily, begrudgingly, but they will. And that's what matters. <laughs> Where will you be on that day? But that's it from the Brexit party, and I know I got a little bit dark towards the end. But nonetheless, let me know what uh, you think down below. I'm always intrigued to hear your guys' input, what you think, what happens, and uh, what you think about the Brexit party manifesto, or at least the excerpts here. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy your weekend. Until next time, like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will see you next time.